Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Americans are evenly split over whether Trump should give the speech as long as we have the shutdown. Look at that. 48-48. Give the speech up there on the hill at the Congress while we still have the shutdown, even Stephen. But that same poll found that more than twice as many Americans want Trump to give up the wall demand. Just give up the wall. 66% say Trump should accept the budget without the 5.6 for the wall. A new Associated Press poll shows the the shutdown has taken a poll in Trump's overall approval. Now, this is lethal to this guy. He has dropped from 42% just last month to 34%. Congratulations, Mr. President. You're almost in, uh, you know, uh, the president of Venezuela territory. He's got like 20 percent. Donald Trump is down at 34 percent. So I have to ask you this. How is it possible that Republicans are still sticking with him? The latest is that the two bills that were introduced in the Senate, the Republican that the bill uh, that Mitch McConnell put on the floor uh, with the five point seven billion for a wall that 66 percent of us say this man ought to give up on because Mexico was going to pay for it. We're not interested in purchasing um, that failed. It failed in the Senate. They they needed to get seven Democrats to vote with them. They got one. Anybody want to guess? Anybody? Anybody? West Virginia? Joe Manchin, of course. Joe Manchin. So they got one Democrat to vote for the five point seven billion. Then it was the I, I don't even want to call it the Democrats' turn. I can't even think of it as being the Democrats' turn because the continuing resolution to simply open the government and fund the government, except for the Department of Homeland Security, which would be negotiated, because that's where the stupid wall conversation has to happen. Um, That's a continuing resolution that passed the Senate just a, a, a month ago by voice vote with no dissent by 96 veto proof majority votes. 96 votes for that same damn bill. All right, I will, I will say that they did, uh, the, the Democrats put a little more, a little more into uh, the original Senate continuing resolution for uh, disaster relief. Woohoo! And so we needed, I, I don't, I hate saying we needed because this is the same damn bill that the Senate just voted on with 96 votes. We needed 13 of the Republicans to not flip on their own bill, to just stick with their original vote on their own bill, and we got six. Okay, we got uh, Susan Collins. She voted yes on both. That's how how moderate she is. I could go for this, and I could go for that, a little of this, the schmear of that. She's uh, she's very um, malleable. She's very uh, agile. She must take yoga. You know, those yoga bodies are really incredible. Susan Collins was a yes on both. Uh, Lamar Lamar Alexander voted uh, for the continuing resolution. Uh, Cory Gardner of, Col- uh, of Colorado voted for the, resol- the continuing resolution, as he did before. Uh, Johnny Isaacson of Georgia voted yes, as he did before. Uh, Senator, did Mike Lee, Mike Lee of Utah and Mitt Romney, I believe, uh, no, am I wrong? Lisa Murkowski voted the same way she did before. And Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, he wasn't there before, voted. So we got six Republicans to vote the exact same way, except for, well, I should say five, because Mitt wasn't there. Mitt has no principles, by the way. None whatsoever. However, The State of Our Union, they're talking about who should give the State of the Union and when should he give the State of the Union. The State of the Union is, cl- what is he going to say? He's going to stand up in Congress with Nancy Pelosi behind him and a joint session of the Senate and the Joint Chiefs and the Supreme Court. And 
the House and everything, and it's going to go, Lady, Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States, the State of our Union is closed, everybody. It's freaking closed for business. We're going to have 0% growth. It's all closed. So these two bills failed. You know what that means? It means the State of the Union is still closed. This is just so sad. This was a three-week funding bill. We can't even get the, the 96 that voted for a clean funding bill, last clean funding bill, to vote this clean funding bill today when it's really crunch time. What kind of people are these? Did you know how they were? It is crazy. It's absolutely effing crazy. It's sickening crazy. It's bizarrely crazy. And you have people that are literally, literally uh, uh, going to food pantries in charge of our national security. I uh, This just blows my mind. This is just, uh, this is insane. This is just so evil and so ugly. And you know, just when you think it can't get any uglier. Scotty sent me this clip this morning of Wilbur Ross. Have you seen the Wilbur Ross? Have you seen it? This toad? Have you seen this man, the former vice chair of the money laundering, Russian money laundering, Bank of Cyprus, who's now our commerce secretary on the TV, the man who called himself the king of bankruptcies? I mean, it's a competition between him and Mitt Romney, right? Uh, You know, buying uh, distressed companies and then picking off the good parts taking all the cash out and then, you know, selling the debt. Oh, my God. This I looked at this clip this morning. I was sitting in my little yellow office, and I swear to you, all I could say, I even said to Scotty when we, when we talked, I, I got to come up with better words because all I could think of is, oh, my God. Oh, my, I said it out loud. Check this out if you haven't seen Wilbur Ross telling these 800,000 who are work I mean you got people working without pay people who are told not to come to work and not getting paid I, I, and here oh my god this billionaire here is what he actually had to say about you, the, the predicament that our, our 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 TSA guys are in, our air traffic controllers are in, our corrections, federal corrections officers are in, our border security, our border patrol, our customs agents, the entire Department of Homeland Security, 200,000 people, the Food and Drug Administration, inspections of food not happening. This is this is this is his. Oh my God! Do you worry about safety at this point? Well, I do worry about safety, and it's kind of disappointing that the air traffic controllers are calling in sick in pretty large numbers, uh, depending on the week. Many I've of them seen... can't afford to support their f- so. Well, remember this. They are eventually going to be paid. The president signed that into Mr. law. Mr. Secretary, a... but, they, but, they, but, but many of these people need... Mr. Secretary, many, many of these workers clearly need the paycheck uh, on a week-by-week basis. They're they're not, uh, frankly, in my shoes, nor in yours, nor in yours. And so the the question is, is this battle and fight at this point in the ballgame worth worth it? Meaning, is the debate over everything else that, 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 that the administration's fighting for worth more than the, the, then the risk that's being taken on at this very moment uh, and, and the effect that it's happen, having on, on the families of these federal workers? Well, first of all, the banks and the credit union should be making credit available oh to my them. God. When you think about it, these are basically government guaranteed loans because the government has committed these folks will get their back pay once this whole thing gets settled down. So there really is not a good excuse why there really should be a liquidity crisis. Now, true, the people might have to pay a little bit of interest, but the idea that it's paycheck or zero is not a really valid idea. There's no reason why some institution wouldn't be willing to lend. And indeed, we've heard tales of some of the government. So it should be put on the private sector? The private sector needs to step up where the public sector can't? No, what I'm saying is there have been ads run by a number of the public sector credit unions, which are member organizations of the people who work in the departments, 
Those have announced very, very low interest rate loans to bridge people over the gap. Oh, my effing God. Go get a loan. Go get a loan, and sure, you're going to have to pay like, I don't know, 18% interest, 5% interest. It depends on your credit, you know, your credit score right now, right? Uh, but go get a loan because, you know, that's not time consuming. And that isn't going to have to get processed while you are suffering through your second missed pay period. Some, most people can't make it through one missed pay period. He's telling you now you're going to make tomorrow be two pay periods you missed. And it's your own damn fault. Why don't you go get a loan? Why don't you go to the bank? Why don't you go to a credit union? Because uh, what you have here, according to Wilbur Ross... What you have here is not indentured servitude or involuntary servitude or even slavery, meaning you're working and doing a job, working 60 hours a week, six days a week. If you're an air traffic controller, that's your schedule. And not only are you doing that many hours and not getting paid for it, but it's your own damn fault that you don't go and apply for some stinking loan. And then when you do get your back pay, Oh, well, your pay's been decreased by the amount of interest you have to pay on this loan you took out. But, you know, stop crying. Stop whining about the president and these Republicans that shut down the government because really all you guys have is a liquidity problem. Being broke in Wilbur Ross's world is a liquidity problem. What the? This just blows my mind. I'm saying to myself, this is the absolute heart of darkness. This is the most evil thing. And then, oh, and by the way, he keeps saying, I don't know why the air traffic controls are calling in sick. That's what he said at the beginning of that clip. The air traffic controllers are not calling in sick. You moron. You're supposed to be our commerce secretary. You're supposed to have your, 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 your mind wrapped around this. And he's like, I don't quite understand why federal workers need food banks. Put it in perspective. You're talking about 800,000 workers. And while I feel sorry for the individuals that have hardship cases, 800,000 workers if they never got their pay, which is not the case, they will eventually get it. But if they never got it, you're talking about a third of a percent on our GDP. So it's not like it's a gigantic number overall. Mr. Secretary, but there, Mr. Secretary, there are reports that there are some federal workers who are going to homeless shelters to get food. Well, I know they are, and I don't really quite understand why, because, as I mentioned before, the, the obligations that they would undertake, say a borrowing from a bank or a credit union, are, in effect, federally guaranteed. Oh, my God. So the 30 days of pay that some people will be out, there's no real reason why they shouldn't be able to get a loan against it. And we've seen right. a number of ads. I'm, I can't, it, you, not, what the, this is pure evil. Okay, I mean, I just, I, I just sat there, I watched this, cl I didn't even think, first I thought somebody, you know, took Wilbur Ross and they put words in his mouth because it would be so outrageous. No, it's real, it's actually, so here's the, so your 30 days that you haven't gotten paid for, go get a loan, and yeah, you might have to pay interest on that loan, but I don't see why you don't get that loan, and you know, get that paperwork going, get it started, because, you know, you may have to pay interest, and then there'll be late fees on the phone bill, there'll be late fees on your mortgage, late fees on missed rent, late fees on your car payment, late fees on, uh, you know, your cell phone, late fees on So, you know, you may end up in the hole, but what are you worried about? What are you worried about? It's just a liquidity problem. That's all it is. I don't know why you're going to food banks. It's, oh my God. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.